Good morning and welcome to worship at St. John's Lutheran Church. If we could invite you to please find the brown welcome pad somewhere in your pew, maybe in the hymnal rack in front of you or on either side, and just let us know that you've joined us for church this morning. We very much appreciate that. If you have a prayer concern that you would like shared during worship this morning, you can indicate that on the back of the slip. You can turn that into your ushers who will be collecting those slips during the first hymn in just a minute. Ash Wednesday is uh, coming up this week, and so we invite you to services at 4 o'clock and 7 o'clock. And I had one other announcement I needed to make, didn't I? And it escapes my memory. So at this time, we invite you to please stand. The brief order of confession and forgiveness is in the front of your red hymnal if you would face the cross at this time. We gather for worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing verses 1 through 4 of our gathering hymn, number 308.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirm the mysteries of faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory and bring us to enjoy its fullness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 24. At Mount Sinai, Moses experienced the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. The glory of the Lord settled on the mountain, and on the seventh day, God called out to Moses. On the mountain, God gave Moses the stone tablets inscribed with the Ten Commandments. Exodus 24, verses 12 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for the instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, 
and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading of Psalm 2. Please read with me responsively. Why do the nations conspire and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord has them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, with trembling. Or he will be angry, and you will perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Happy are all who take refuge in him. The second reading is from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1. At the transfiguration, God's voice was heard, declaring Jesus to be his beloved son. By the activity of the Holy Spirit, God's voice continues to be heard through the word of scripture. 2 Peter 1, verses 16 through 21. For we did not follow clearly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father, and when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Excuse me. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel this Transfiguration Sunday is from the gospel according to St. Mark. Mark chapter 17, beginning with verse 1. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. 
With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one but Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Amen. You may be seated. This weekend... Transfiguration Weekend, Transfiguration Sunday, marks the end of the Epiphany season. Epiphany begins with Jesus' baptism and ends with Jesus' transfiguration. It's interesting to note that the pronouncement from God are almost identical. As God says, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. Transfiguration. One of those big words that also has a big meaning. It means change, total change, a metamorphosis, change. It really isn't something that I can explain to you this morning. It's one of those miracles. It's a God thing. <laughs> True? Yes. But it is truly an act of God. So this morning, I thought it might be fun to kind of make a little play of the transfiguration. So I need some of the kids that I talked with before church and their parents. If, if they want to come on down, I need several people to help me. Yeah. There they come. Hmm. So today, today in our gospel, number one, we need a mountain. Who would like to be the mountain today? All right, come on up. You can be the mountain. You stand, go up the steps. There you go. Stand so they can see mountain. She's a pretty mountain, isn't she? There you go. Look at that pretty smile. Then we need the disciples. Let's see, who were Jesus' favorite disciples? How about a James? Who would like to be James? All right, James, you can stand right over here. Jesus will be coming. And this is Peter, another good friend of Jesus. Who would like to be Peter? There you go, Bella. And last of all, John. Who would like to be John? All right, here's John. Yeah, boy, he did. All right, there's John. These are the three really good friends of Jesus. All right, now we need Jesus. Who would like to be Jesus today? Would one of you guys? There, you've got the right color on today. Yellow, there you go. All right, you turn around with your disciples, okay? I need a couple other characters up on that mountain. I need an Elijah. All right, there's Elijah. How about Moses? Oh, yeah, he's really important. Yeah. And last of all, I need a cloud. All right. There you go. Why don't you come up by the mountain, okay? 
All right, we're going to put Elijah right up over here. Uh, there you go. There's Elijah. And Moses will put you right over here. All right, you can go up one step. There you go. Oh, doesn't that look good? All right, Jesus, come with me. And you just are kind of the actors, okay? So, Jesus, who would you like to take to the mountain today? You don't know. Well, look over there. I just have a good idea for you. Who would this be? John, Peter. Are they your good friends? Yes, they are. So would you say, come on, guys, let's go up to the mountain, okay? All right, get your guys. Come up to the mountain. All right, turn around. Come up. All right, where's the mountain? Oh, it's way up there. Just stand right up here. All right, come on, John. There you go. All right, so now we have Jesus and his favorite disciples, Peter, James, and John. And they're up on the mountain, and the cloud covers the mountain. Can you come in with the cloud? Oh, covering the mountain, swirling around. All right, all of you look up, look up at the mountain, and you see Elijah, hold yours up, and Moses. Oh, Moses from the Old Testament? You know what Moses did? He went up the mountain and got the Ten Commandments. Oh my goodness, there they are, Mount Sinai and the Ten Commandments. And Elijah, Elijah was a prophet and he told people good things that were going to happen and some not so good things. So he has a happy and a sad face because he was a prophet to tell the future. Now, you guys are all really excited. Can you act excited? Yay, yay. We see Moses and we see Elijah. This is good. Let's act excited. Yay, yay. Boy, at 8.15 in the morning, this is about it. This is it. All right, so Peter, put your hand way up, way up, and you say, I want to stay here. I want to stay here because I want to be with these guys, don't I? I want to sit and listen to them. I want to have catechism with them. It's going to be fun. Let's put up some tents and let's stay here. Doesn't that sound fun, Peter? Sure. This is going to be exciting. All right, Jesus, can you move up a step? Up by the mountain, one more. Yeah, Jesus is up there. All right, you turn around. All right, look at Jesus. Can you look at Jesus? Suddenly, a cloud covers Jesus. Pastor Chris, I need you. Uh, yes, wait, I need you. On, let me have this one. Oh, you want yours. There you go. That's his special favorite. All right, this is going to... All right, and suddenly there's this light. Turn on your light. Oh, look at there. All right, Jesus, can you smile? Ah, there you go. Happy, happy Jesus. And he shone like the sun. It was so bright they had to cover their eyes, just like Pastor Chris's flashlight. It's so awesome. I think mine just gave out. <laughs> Rats. There we go. There, now it's back. All right, so they're gone. All right, suddenly the light stays on, but Elijah and Moses, you move out of the picture. Oh, wow. A miracle. And now Jesus is with them with the disciples, and he says, come on, we've got to get back to work. We've got to get back to our ministry. Now, can you keep a secret? Hmm? Don't tell anyone what happened until, until I've been raised from the dead. Can you keep a secret? Yeah, that's a hard secret to keep, isn't it? Yeah, now we can tell. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer.
Dear Jesus, it is so much fun to act it out, to try to live into those moments, those times of miracle happenings. Be with us now. Help us to tell others because we do not have to keep it a secret anymore. God is good. Jesus forgives us. We are blessed. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's give them a hand. Oh, my. Transfiguration Sunday, a, a hard Sunday to, to preach on because pastors like to give you the inside story. And the inside story is the outside story. It just is. Jesus is so real for us. Jesus is right here and right now and every day, right here in our hearts. Jesus is very real as we worship together, as we sing our hymns, as we do our liturgy. Jesus is present for us. We call upon Jesus when we bow our heads in prayer. We close our eyes so we can literally see Jesus right beside us. When we come to Holy Communion, we receive the bread and we receive the wine. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Can we explain it? No. To explain it takes away the miraculous. We just know that it is true. This is transfiguration. This is that moment when we find in our hearts that we no longer live for just me. We live for others as Christ did for us. And is it always pretty and is it always fun? No, not always, but it is always good. For Jesus leads us into the hearts of the helpless, into the homes of those in need. Jesus leads us into the pain of those wounded, or maybe it's just the routine caring for each other. For you see, Jesus was there as they carried that foul-smelling cot with a crippled man on it, as they carried it to Jesus, and he healed them. He healed the man, and he walked again. Jesus was with those disciples who wonder, what is Jesus doing? We can't do miracles. How are we supposed to go and be disciples? And Jesus was patient with them and loving and taught them to trust, to trust, and they too would experience miracles. 
Jesus is with us. When you go out in the morning and you see the sun rising, as I entered the church today, the sun was streaming in our stained glass windows. How? Why? No, it just happens. It's a miracle of creation. And at the end of the day, you look out to the west and the horizon and you see that a beautiful sunset. And you go, wow, a transfiguration, a miracle, a miracle of God. When you witness someone alone, you are in need of a gentle word, and you quietly, quietly reach out to them and say a prayer for them and with them. It is transfiguration. It is a change. It's a moment where their face literally lights up, just like our flashlights. It is a bright light in a dark world. And Jesus would say to us, it is love. That's love. Jesus' love. God's love for us. And wherever it is, wherever it may lead, we discover that love is already there. For God is love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Love. Love one another as God has loved us. For Jesus meets us in love, we face God in love, and we are transfigured. We are changed. Thanks be to God. And all God's people say together, Amen. Let us turn in our hymn books to our hymn of the day. 815 as we again sing of the light i want to walk as a child of the light 815 and why don't we stand and stretch a little if you're able as we sing this one together
Lord, Lord Jesus. In celebration of the Transfiguration, today let us confess our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. It's found on the second to last page of your hymnal. Together, let us confess our Christian faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare our hearts for prayer. Let us pray for all people throughout the world and for God's people in every place according to their needs. Lord God, in your servant Moses, you revealed your glory upon Mount Sinai. Reveal your glory now also through missionaries and campus ministries that your light may shine in their acts of caring, justice, and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of Adam and Eve, you have created all humanity in your image. Cultivate in us a passion for your good creation and transform our lives that our stewardship may reveal your holy image. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of David, you have sent shepherds to care for your people. Where leaders rule instead by fear, transform their hearts with compassion and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of Naomi and Ruth, you care for the widow and the orphan. Be with all who mourn. Bless children in need of foster care with loving families. Protect refugees. Heal the sick. Strengthen all caretakers. Especially this morning, we give into your care, our friends and family here in this place. We pray for Bill, Deanna, Larry, and Arlen. We give in to your loving embrace, Dave and Marion, and all whom we name now in the quiet of our hearts. To these, your people and your children, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of Lazarus, you are the life and the resurrection. Deepen our trust in the, your Son, Jesus Christ, and in the promise of his resurrection. Help us to grapple and struggle with what it means to die to sin and to come alive in you. Especially watch over the family of Frank Curry, of Chuck Keenan, and also of Melbourne Schmidt. That all their families may know and look forward to the day when they shall stand together with you and all the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers in the name of Christ, the light of the world, who is one with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Together let us rise and share the peace of Jesus.
together with praise and thanksgiving, let us offer our gifts to God. And we'd also like to invite the students and kids to come forward to receive the noisy offering as our organist Charlene plays the joyful sound in the background. everyone what he has done. Let all the Lord rejoice. Let us pray together. Thankful hearts and voices raised, tell everyone what God has done. Merciful God, receive the gifts we bring, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Through this meal, unite us as your body, shining with the light of your justice and mercy, for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our salutary duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sharing our life lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that all our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the table has been set, all is prepared, and our Lord says, come and dine. Please be seated.
And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our sending hymn this morning is number 671. Congregation may be seated. Briefly, we want to highlight a few announcements for you today. Here are the people to keep in the prayers. They're found on page 8 of your bulletin, and we do invite you to please take your bulletin home with you and remember these people throughout the week. Our Reformation video today is on, again, one of the hallmarks of the Reformation, one of the phrases that has become part of the Lutheran fabric, and that is this, sin boldly, but believe more boldly still. And so, for a little bit of what that means, here is our two-minute Reformation video. Some people may be surprised to hear that ethics is part of the original sin. How so? Look at Genesis 3 and you'll see that ethics is the serpent's temptation to know what God knows, the knowledge of good and evil. We all know that every day we have to decide what to do and what not to do. The decision typically centers around the issue of good versus bad. Luther recognized that scripture names all that we choose to do as full of sin, and sin is not looked favorably upon by God. So the question arises, how then shall we live? Philip Melanchthon was Luther's colleague in Wittenberg. While Luther was in hiding at the Wartburg Castle, Melanchthon found himself having to be a leader in Wittenberg. And he felt the weight of carrying the Reformation cause on his shoulders. Since Luther couldn't be there to address what was happening directly, Melanchthon needed to be the one who decided, what next? 
Simply put, he was asking, how then shall we live? Luther recognized he wouldn't be able to give Melanchthon an answer that would be justified in God's sight. Melanchthon was bothered by the idea that his decisions could cause harm. In this light, Luther wrote to Melanchthon, be a sinner and sin boldly, but believe and rejoice in Christ even more boldly, for he is victorious over sin, death, and the world. Luther knew that Christ came for the sick and not the well, the sinner, not the righteous. It was and still is the sinners he came to save, who are the sheep who hear his voice. And it was and still is Christ's words of forgiveness that free you to live anew in this world, sin and sin boldly. All of this was said and done so you can remember, a mighty fortress is our God. The season of Lent, dear friends, which begins on Ash Wednesday, is a time where we wrestle with what does it mean that we are sinners and yet also believe in the promise of forgiveness very boldly. You'll find in your mailboxes this week a red devotional. It's written by our confirmation students. There's one for every day of Lent, as there are 47 confirmation students. How serendipitous is that, huh? So this is the basis for our small group conversations and for our Lenten devotional times. You can see that we're in need of some small group leaders. We're going to have small groups that are going to be meeting on Sunday morning, Wednesday night at 5.30, Thursday morning, Thursday evening, and I think probably one on Friday too. So if you'd like to sign up for a small group, if one of those times fits with your schedule, please see Pastor Gene or myself in the church office, all right? Again, Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday. Services are at 4 and 7 o'clock. We really appreciate the work that the Altar Guild does. They are having a meeting this coming Saturday at 9 o'clock, so spread the good word. And there's also an announcement in your bulletin about the Women's ELCA Convention up in Minneapolis this summer. And so if you're interested in that, uh, look for more information there. If you're visiting today, welcome. We invite you to take a gift bag with you on the way out. And if you know someone who needs a quilt finished, I think that's the gist of the, of the announcement here. The quilters are looking for work to do, and they'd love to help out if someone has a quilt that they need help finishing. And with that, we invite you to please stand for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen.